Riding with the Rabbi. Welcome to another episode of Riding with the Rabbi. Uh, you'll notice something quite unusual um, for this episode, and you're not wrong, that's correct. There's nobody in the car with me. I am riding by myself, and the normally occupied passenger seat with our very special guest is empty. Uh, I wanted to do something a, a little different today, and I'll explain why. So uh, today, Asura Batavis, the Fast of Tavis, marks the first yurt site for my father. And I'm sure that a lot of people who have gone through the mourning process have asked themselves or wished to themselves and saying, you know, if I could have one more conversation with my loved one, or if I could talk to them now, what would we say? So uh, I was thinking about it. This is really just part of, part of my process of, of kind of coming to terms with the finality of of the year of mourning and just kind of our own loss in my life and our family. And I'm just kind of thinking, what would a conversation with my dad look like uh, today? So I would, you know, many times I've had my dad here in this seat. You know, I, I, I think back, Dad, when we had, uh, when, you, when we first moved to Livingston and I was picking you up every single day at 6.20 in the morning to come down and, uh, and chew with us. So, um, Anyway, Dad, lots, lots happened since uh, since we saw you last. We had a uh, really, we were very blessed, first of all, that we could all be with you when you left this world. Uh, you were surrounded by a uh, mom, uh, your wife of, of well over 50 years, 55 years, and your Americans who were in the country at the time, um, who were, uh, happened to be local, uh, we were we were all there, and your grandkids, and you were surrounded by them. And as you took your last breath, and we said Shema with you, you you knew that you left this world uh, surrounded with love and, and in, a, in the most peaceful manner. And it was miraculous that it was able to happen, uh, not in a nursing home and not in a hospital, but in our home. And that's something that uh, I think we'll forever be grateful for that we had the opportunity to really say goodbye. Um, we had a I thought it was a really good funeral. Um, we were able to get the, uh, you know, you, you died on, on Christmas Eve, so Christmas Day we couldn't really do a funeral. It was tough, American-wise. Uh, but luckily it poured that day. It was really, really miserable that day. And um, we had uh, military honors that were given. I know that's something that was really, really important to you. And um, thank God we were able to share the service with so many people uh, using technology. And then also we were able to have a very, very meaningful shiva in that, COVID time, people were able to come visit, and thanks to your your in-law children who took care of everything, uh, Sarah, Liz, Matt, everyone, they, they saw to it that everything was arranged, we had appointments, and people from all walks of life, and, and they were uh, from New Rochelle, and from your family, and from military, they were all uh, reaching out and expressed, uh, you know, how special it was to have known you, and, you know, we, the truth is we learned a lot about you, Dad, during during that period because, you know, when you see somebody as your father and then you hear other people's perspectives, it's uh, it's often enlightening. Um, a lot's, a lot's gone on, you know what, we've we've worked our way, you know, I'm sure your your first concern is mom. Mom is as great and as stubborn as ever, as you will know. Um, she's she's doing quite well, but I, I guess we're really lucky that we're, the three of us are, are not five minutes away from her at all times and we see her all the time and uh, the kids go and every Friday for bracha like they used to come to you and um, she's, she's doing well she's doing really well she made a little bit of a shrine in the house to you which is quite appropriate and uh, but you know she's in she's in good shape and don't worry we got an eye on her to the extent that she will uh, that she'll let us um, and everyone else you know we're, we're managing and I have to say that uh, I, I want to thank you for for giving Ben and I and really Emily and and Leah the Jewish education that you gave us because I was just thinking yesterday, yesterday or a couple days ago, I was leading all the davening and shul on the Shabbos before the yurt site, which turns out was my bar mitzvah parsha. Uh, as you remember, Vayigash, Dad. And I did everything. I did Kabbalah Shabbos. I did Pesukah Dezirma, Shachris, Laning, Haftorah, Musaf, even even in Kaloina. And it, all I could think of was that how lucky I am that you gave me the skills that I could that I could do that. And it's 
one of the greatest gifts uh, that we have. And uh, this last year, of course, you know, we had the responsibility, and it was really an honor and a privilege to say Kaddish for you, Dad. And uh, one of the best parts was that I got to daven with Ben every single day. Ben would come to our shul in the morning and the evening. And, you know, there were a couple of occasions where, because of scheduling and things out of our control, that uh, one of us one of us couldn't be there. But you should know that, I, I, to my knowledge, I think every single appropriate Kaddish was recited on your behalf. And uh, by one, if not both of your sons, um, really every single day of the 11 months of mourning. Uh, I, the first one I missed, and I, I felt really bad about it, but I, I missed it on your birthday, Dad. It was April 12th. I was, uh, Sarah and I went to Florida just to kind of recuperate for a couple of days after a long season. And I planned everything beautifully where I could stay and have Minyan and I got everything and I scheduled the flight home so that I could have chakras in the morning and be home in time for Mincha. But, you know, got out of the plans and there was, uh, there was a terrible storms on the East Coast and our flight kept getting delayed, and believe it or not, in Fort Lauderdale Airport, I couldn't rustle 10 people together to get a minion, of all places. Um, what happened after that is they ended up having to drive home because we couldn't get a flight from Sunday till Wednesday. We tried everything. We drove here. We ended up driving home, and thank God we uh, we lived to talk about it. Uh, and we figured if Sarah and I could do that, we could do anything. And um, so that was really... That. I, but I felt bad. I'm sorry. I, I, I felt bad that I missed that, uh, that Kaddish. But lots of other milestones. I'm actually, you know, this is the month of December and there's lots of things happening at once kind of in my own life. You know, I'm hitting a, a certain milestone age, which, you know, it's hard to believe. And um, it's not lost on me that I was, when I was born, you were a certain age. And when Moshe was born, I was the exact same age. And I think about that a lot now. And I try to make the most of uh, every second that we have. But in one month, we, we celebrated uh, Adina's bat mitzvah, and it was the first real family get-together in New Jersey uh, that you weren't there. And it was, it was really hard. It was really hard, and I think, I think Ben took it the hardest. Um, but, you know, Adina was incredible, and it was a, a real simcha uh, and a real tribute. And then, of course, we have your yurt site today, and then I have this big birthday that's kind of hanging over my head like a, like a cloud that I can't get rid of. I guess it's a good thing, but, you know, I don't know, everybody's affected a different way. And I think perhaps one of the most uh, exciting things that's happened, of course, is that your first grandchild got married, um, Esther in Israel. Um, she got married, a, a, a really nice Yemenite boy, doesn't speak a word of English, but I think that you would love, love his family because, you know, they're Yemenite. And because of all the COVID restrictions and the border control, it was very hard, so nobody could go, but luckily I was able to secure permission to enter Israel, and I went for a couple of short days, and I surprised them at the wedding, and it was really, really, really special, because I can imagine how hard it is uh, for our sister in Israel, you know, Leah, that, she, you know, she's kind of separated from all of us, and while it's great that she's in Israel and a whole family, but we're all here, and um, I think it was probably better off that mom didn't go. Uh, I think the trip would have been too much, but I really only went for, for maybe... Uh, you know, not even not even 72 hours, I don't think. Uh, but I got to see Eliana in Israel, and I got to see the whole family. Uh, but, you know, life life goes on, and, you know, I guess that's what we learn when we go through a whole year of mourning, is that uh, life, life has to go on, and life is for the living, and celebrations are for celebrating, and um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm looking forward or just just happening that I'm going to fully emerge back into society, uh, because I've been holding back of doing certain things, you know, taking Moshe to his first Ranger game and I remember with dad when you took me he took me in my first Ranger game when I was a uh, little older than Moshe is but then again I didn't know much about hockey when I was his age as much as he knows now but you know that's just I, I think back to the times you know I used to and I, and I relate to it like when I used to bug you could you could you play ball with me and you know you had work and you weren't you know I know how I know exactly how old you were when I was asking because that's how old I am when he's asking me about that but most importantly I just I just think about you know that the, I'm the person I am um, because of you and because of mom and I, I probably never said it in, in your lifetime how appreciative I am of the person that you made us and, our, and my siblings and um, and it's it's been a, it's been a hard year you know the truth is that 
we didn't really have you for, for a long time leading up to your to your passing, but you were still our dad and you were still there, but you know, obviously being in a nursing home and COVID and uh, whatever, but I, I really hope that in some way that you're looking down and seeing what we're up to because there's not a thing that we do, there's not a day that goes by that you know, something that we do is influenced by something that you did for us. Um, that the way we, I, I will often find myself sitting a certain way doing the crossword puzzle. All I'm missing is the pipe, but uh, doing the same expressions or, or, or the way we handle certain situations, and I realize that it's all directly from you. So um, rest assured, Dad, that you know we'll take care of the family, and that you know what you 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 did a good job. You did a great job, and. and we will do our very hardest, work our very hardest to continue your legacy. Um, I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me here today, and you know you're with me every single day. So, um, look, you know we should have uh, we should have simplest. And, and what I could tell to our viewers, other than my mom, um, you know what? If there's if there are people in your life that are important to you, and if there are people in your life who have influenced you, um, tell them while they're alive. Write him a note, send him a text, give him a call, um, something. But you know, and again, I have I have no regrets. I've I've, I've told my father how how I felt and, and what he meant to me, and that's why we were able to celebrate his life. And you know, you never want to live with regrets. So, um, I know this is a kind of a, a personal side of me, maybe that you're not used to seeing as much as I am out there. But um, you know, like I said, this is part of part of my process of how I'm coming to. Uh, to, to terms with this and you know now I'm in, I'm in that category so uh, I appreciate your indulgence and we will God willing resume back to our regular normal wacky programming next time uh, here on Riding with the Rabbi Dad uh, we miss you you know should have an Aliyah and I hope that we do honor to your Neshama and to your life uh, every single day of ours